All right, so we're gonna set up a live trap, try to catch ourselves a raccoon so we can do a little bit of a catch and cook. The trick is, is that uh, raccoons aren't in season right now, but we do have a raccoon that was given to me from a, a farmer as a nuisance animal, so we're gonna actually cook that. I wanna show just how easy it is to catch raccoons, so if you're, you know, we always talk about survival situations and catching game and raccoons are probably one of the easiest things to catch, right? Here, yeah, I would say. Yeah, Here and this are. is farmland. We're yeah. in southern Ontario this time, playing around. And uh, so this is typical off-the-shelf live trap um, because they won't let us use um, any other kind of foothold trap or or a body grip trap or anything of that sort. But these are these are legal for removing nuisance wildlife. So all that we're going to do is you're going to use an empty can of uh, salmon. Uh, I have a little bit of salmon left, and it smells pretty strong, right? Yeah. And uh, what have you done? Like you, you did a little trick? Yeah, well the lid had salmon stuck to it also. So I took the lid and I dragged it through the grass to leave a salmon scent trail from the little edge of the water here. There's a little spring fed creek and up to the edge of the trap, just in case something's traveling through the water, the raccoon will smell it or if it crosses the path. Yep. And we've got the chill camera set up over here. So hopefully we catch any of the action. Um, if we do catch something, we're gonna use that as rights to use the raccoon. If we don't catch anything, we're still going to eat the raccoon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if anybody knows anything about raccoons, they're super easy to catch and they're extremely plentiful and they aren't on the most people's menu. I mean, they carry all sorts of really weird things and yeah. parasites and all those things. So they're not exactly very palatable, but we're going to try do our best to try to make it more palatable. We've got a recipe, uh, a Native American recipe I dug up. So we're going to yeah. we're going to try to put something together. They're not mentally pal palatable, but they're they're good eating. Yeah, they're a dark meat, right? And they have to be treated like a dark meat, so they have to be slow cooked. Anyway, we'll get into that a little bit later. So all we're going to do is chuck this into the back. And uh, all it, all that activates it is a, it's a basically a foot pedal at the back. And when the animal steps on it, it closes shut and can't open again. So there we go. Set. I'm going to check this in the morning. And uh, like I say, if we do catch something, we're just going to release it. So there'll be no... Um, no killing this time, but there is going to be a dead animal. All right, so we check tomorrow? Yep. All right, cool. All right, guys, so here's here's the raccoon that we got as a nuisance animal. And uh, we're not going to stress this raccoon out too much. As long as we're not uh, right up in its face, it's not going to bother it. You can see it's just, it, it wants to get out of the light. They don't like to be out in the light. So we're going to turn this raccoon away and set it aside. Um, hopefully we got a, some good trail camera images. Alright, let's get this raccoon on its way. It's not light. Raccoon. One raccoon. And all it took was a empty can of salmon. Yep. Yeah. I mean, be pretty easy to do that with a bit of fish remains. Yeah, fish guts or something. Just drag them from the water up to your trap, throw them in the back. That worked out great. Yeah, and that's just a man man-made live trap. So it keeps your food if you want. If you want to catch an unlimited supply of raccoon and you needed it, that'd be the way to do it. Yeah, especially in an area where there's lots of nuisance raccoons, like if farmers have them or in vineyards, you could you could be supplying yourself with a lot of raccoons that way, right? Yeah. And it keeps your food fresh too. So if, you try, if you're doing this in the summer, you don't have to be too worried about your <coughs> food spoiling. Yeah. Unless you're new here, you've seen us skin plenty of animals. A raccoon's not much different. If you skin other animals, it's pretty much the same body plan. First step we want to do is make sure you rig it up nice and secure. It makes the job a whole lot easier. Once you have it hung, just have a quick go over, see if you want to keep the pelt. In this case, I didn't want to keep it. It wasn't very good shape. Just make your first incision along the leg and follow that down toward the midsection of the raccoon. 
go around the penis and make sure you don't puncture too, down too deep into the bladder. You'll do that on both legs. The tricky part for a raccoon is the tail, but it's pretty simple. If you have a pair of pliers, there's also a special tool. You make an incision on the tail and then pull down. That will free up the tail. In this case, I just cut the tail off. And then once you have that free, it's pretty easy. You just work your way down the body, pulling as you go around the front arms. And uh, I happen to stop around the neck. From there, gutting simple just up through the abdominal cavity, making sure you don't go too deep, and then down through the sternum. By using your fingers and spreading it open, you can make sure you don't hit any of the vitals. After that, it's a simple matter of carving around the anus and freeing that up, and then digging down nice and deep. You can see how I'm having a little bit of trouble here, but if you dig down nice and deep, you get the esophagus, and that's the front connection. So from the rear to the front, once that's free, all the guts will fall out. And then you're free to decide whether you want to keep any of the internal organs. And then off to the creek for a quick rinse. So we've got that raccoon that you had harvested earlier and we're going to work our way through deglanding it. Um, so there's lots of good YouTube videos on how to degland and prepare a raccoon, which is how I've learned to do it. Um, this is my first one, so that's my disclaimer. So we're going to pan down and we're going to start with uh, in behind and behind the leg this one's this one's not a very big not a very big gland but there's one so that's what, that one's just basically in the ar in the back armpit back yeah. leg armpit right in the knuckle in the joint knuckle it looks like a little bean Usually in a fresh raccoon it would be green. These ones are turned white. It's bigger on this side. Here, just keep it there. I'll zoom in there. See what it looks like. Yeah. So there's nothing like that on the other side? I'll look again. Yeah, maybe double check. Because if, if we don't get them, then they get an off flavor, right? Yep. I mean, this one, it looks like that one. It's just smaller, right? So maybe you just didn't have a developed uh, gland on that side. I don't know. There's a little bit of fatty tissue there. I'll take that out. So when you cut the armpit, like the shoulder and arm is only held by muscle tissue, right? So you can find that separation. And then in here, that looks like one there. Where is it? Is that in view? No. Basically, you, you, you only want the meat. You, you don't want the fat. A lot of people talk about the fat, but uh, Wes S actually put out a good video on... On rendering and cooking? Yeah, he rendered down the, the fat and he said it was good after it rendered. But yep. Most people say it's no good, but he rendered it and filtered it and all that stuff, so... Yep. He said it was, he said it was just fine. So there's an option too if you want to get fat from a raccoon is to render render it down. There's some stringy arm tendons. Look at those. There's a bowstring just waiting to be made. So it's not a, not a tapeworm? In the uh, in the arm? <laughs> Pretty sure not. So these scent glands will be similar to what people have in their armpits give them the, the body odor so you just you don't want that in the meat you're not going to get any value from eating it so that's all cleaned out and then yeah. you would trim out all the fat as much of the fat as you can get but 
soaking it and boiling it is going to do that too, which we're going to do next. We've kept the organs in. We're going to take the gallbladder out. Probably a lot of that stuff we're not going to keep. So I just did a pretty rudimentary gut job, kept the organs in, and we can decide later what we want to do with them. And now is later. There's a blood popsicle. You want that? Uh, well, if we are we hungry? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not not that hungry, I guess. So I'll just cut around the diaphragm. It'll help us take out all the parts. So what parts do we want to keep? You think? Well, I mean, we could probably fry up the liver. This here we don't want, right? There's the gall. Now, it might be tricky to get that out. So what's the reason for... frozen. What's the reason for... You can take the whole thing out and we can put it back in later. What's yeah. the reason for uh, taking the gall out? Well, it's full of bile. So if you puncture the gall, it's going to taint any any meat that it touches. So it's like sour, like eating... Putrid. I don't know, I've never eaten one. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> luckily. Maybe they're really good, maybe it's just an urban myth. A primitive technology myth. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> so the heart would be good to eat. Uh, the lungs, we, we've already determined they're pretty spongy, but you could eat those. Yeah, that might be one of the one of the parasite sources too in a raccoon. For sure. Well, they talk about lot. There's raccoons are like, it's like 90% carry parasites or something like that. Yeah. Especially urban areas. This isn't an urban area where this came from. It came from a farm. So they're going to be eating corn and whatnot. Crops. But they're also going to be eating a lot of raw and raw raw parts of other animals and they're going to pick up those parasites and pass them on. Is that the heart then? Yeah. So the heart's basically just muscle. It has to thaw out because it's also like a popsicle right now. Nice. There's a kidney. Are kidneys are good to eat. Or no? uh, on other animals, I don't know, but I don't. I've never eaten raccoon organs before, so I'm not sure. You can see some of these glands, though, eh? like along the spine here. Yeah, they said there's there's three on either side, so six in total along the spine. Okay. So we will take that out. There's a difference between eating a herbivore, like a hare, and then a raccoon when you have to be a little bit more conscious about the parasites and the glands. I got those, uh, I don't see any more in there, do you? Yeah, I think they're basically kind of attached to the organs. Yeah. So, I mean, there's probably some glands that we'll have missed. I think they came out with the kidneys mostly. Probably. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, probably quarter it up, right? Take some of the fat off, quarter yeah. it up, and then we're going to be going to number two, which is adding it into a, a brine solution and let it tenderize, because this is a dark meat, so be kind of careful about the tenderness of it, so that the palatability of the, the meat. So we'll quarter this up. One quarter? One quarter. And uh, move on to step two. So there's some boneless meat, we can chunk that up. And uh, throw it in. There's a little bit left on this lower leg. The mosquitoes found us, eh? They did. Right when your hands are full of blood and gore, your nose gets runny and the mosquitoes find you. That's pretty much a guarantee. Yeah, I'm about duty. Yeah? Are there a few there? I got you. It's stuck on your ear now. There you oh are. yeah? Since you're doing the dirty work. 
All right. That's the least they could do. Well, now I feel like a princess. Someone's swatting my bugs for Someone's me. Someone's swatting your bugs while you do all the dirty work. <laughs> Not quite. You glad you came up? <laughs> hey? They said, are you glad you came up? Oh, for sure. Good dirt time? Yep. Are we on film the whole time? The whole time. Oh, good thing I didn't say anything inappropriate. So, there's all our pieces, I guess. So this recipe uh, calls for about four cups of water, two cups of vinegar, and a large raccoon. We probably don't have a large raccoon, do we? We probably have small, small yeah. raccoon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we've all got all, all cut up now. We're just gonna throw the pieces that we wanna keep in. Um, we figured we'd probably just try out the liver later, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead, throw that stuff in there. And then we're gonna, we have a little bit more than four cups of water in there right now, so we're gonna dump out our excess. And this is gonna work as a rinse too. We don't actually keep the brine, a little bit of the brine later on, and then we'll boil off a little bit of the water on our first boil. So this lets, we let this sit for eight hours, so it'll be ready for us for dinner. We're gonna go do some fishing. All right, pour a little bit off. Yeah, pour a little bit of it off. This is just plain white vinegar. Oh, it stings! How many times did you cut yourself? <laughs> Zero. Oh, yeah. Okay, and we have pickling salt or pickling spices. I'll maybe include that, but that's just what I use for my leeks. To pickle my leeks. So, let's throw that in there. And then we're just gonna stir that around and let it sit. Eight hours, we'll come back. We'll, uh, we'll do a boil. And add the rest of our ingredients to make a nice pot stew. So our raccoon's been sitting in the brine for most of today and now we're gonna, we're gonna save about a cup of the brine and we're gonna pull the pieces out. This is gonna be rinsed off and we're gonna boil in a cast iron. We're gonna do that for about an hour and a half until it's uh, nice and tender and then we're gonna add our other ingredients. So we have uh, green pepper, uh, green pepper potatoes, uh, onion, and some carrots so that gets added after so for now we're just going to transfer this over just our pieces here and we're going to get them so that they're nice and tender it actually smells pretty good which is encouraging and it is becoming tender you can see how the meat's all starting to fall apart already so we're only gonna add a cup of this as our reserve, a cup or so. It's probably a little much. And the rest is gonna be filled with hot water. And then we're gonna boil that off. And then we'll add our ingredients after.
one little piece left. There it is. How's it look? I don't know. It looks like uh, big chunks of meat and lots of onion. What do you think? It's all right. Yep. That's like a dark meat. I think it could get a little more tender. We got another hour and a half according to our recipe. Breakfast. Dig, dig in. Yep. Yeah, so we let our we let our raccoon stew overnight. It's a real stew. Carrot. A carrot, what? And pepper. You're not gonna dig right into the raccoon. Potatoes. I'm gonna eat everything but the raccoon. Yeah, there's a raccoon. Raccoon hunk. Oh here's a here's a back leg. I don't know if it's as tender as they promised. We'll see. Is it a potato yet? And the potatoes are cooked. And the potatoes are cooked. So there's one ingredient we didn't find, and that's the cold's foot ash, which the recipe called for. Yeah, that one's on my list of things to try out for sure. So this comes from a Native American cookbook. And uh, that was the only thing we missed. So we'll see what, what the what the flavor is like with just the pickling salt. Wait, what first? Onion. It's already on my fork. Oh, okay. That's what people really want to know about anyway. Sure they do. How do those onions taste after three hours or two pot? <laughs> like an onion. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the raccoon first. What? Yep. That's your raccoon, right there. Looks like a dark meat. What does it look like? Looks like beaver to me, or uh, hair, I guess. It looks a lot like rabbit to me, like a big rabbit. Well, that's good. It's good. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually good. I wasn't expecting it to be bad. No? When I had raccoon before, it was on a, on a barbecue, and it was really greasy. It was like eating greasy chicken. That's good. Yeah. That's like a good roast beef. Or a tender hair. Yep. Yeah, that's good. It's a little light on flavoring. Yeah. We have a lot of liquid, eh? You got a, you got a hair on yours still. A hair on my hair? Oh no, it's a raccoon. <laughs> there it goes. Would you eat raccoon again? Oh yeah. For sure. There you go. Catch and cook a raccoon. That's good, I'm just waiting for it to cool down a bit so I can eat it like a chicken wing. Like a caveman, when well, it's too hot to hold. Pretty tasty. It doesn't look like much. Like I think it'd be, it would look different if you cubed it all and did it in that style of stew. It's twice the size of a rabbit. It takes two rabbits to meet your caloric demands for a day. At least two rabbits, probably three. So one raccoon would probably do it. When you throw in all this other stuff and also look at how much food is in there. <laughs> There's. There's a few meals of stew there, right? 